Well folks, here we are. I have to forgive this video, it's a bit impromptu. Um, I'm just bringing the vehicle back from the MOT test there. So, as we can see, 2003 Rover 75, six-door limousine. I'll go over some facts and information about the vehicle here as we go along. This is very much a very brief overview of it. Well, this is going to be a complete well, I wouldn't say a complete restoration, but certainly a, an underneath restoration for the vehicle. It unfortunately does suffer from the problems that a lot of these McNeil conversions have, which obviously in this case being sills. Um, car, as you can see, is overall quite presentable. I wouldn't say original, but it's almost original. A few changes in its life from whenever it was the... Uh, Mayor of Exeter's car. I have to forgive that I don't have my stabilizing unit here with me here today, but I'm sure you shall forgive me because this is only going to be the first part. So yeah, this is what you all want to see. For those of you who've maybe never had the chance to see one in person, at the events and meets and shows. Thought I'd try and show you all the various bits and pieces best that I possibly can. And I thought I would just do it in one take as well rather than chopping and starting and jumping around. Now this car's had some re-trimming work done at some stage. Um, some of it's okay standard, some of it's not. Um, it does have these absolutely glorious little LED lights in it and the headlining had sagged so they've replaced it with this biscuit lining which actually isn't pretty not a bad job match uh, to the uh, standard s sandstone but unfortunately some of the fit and finish on a few bits and pieces as you can see is not quite as high a standard as I would like it to be we'll get to that in time this would be for a missing divider between the driver. There are bits missing. It's certainly far from the cleanest example, but it is certainly better than seeing the car head to scrap, which was possibly its destination. Um, there's a long story in that, but there usually always is when it comes to cars that I own. So doing some rough measurements, the very rear door is actually a long wheelbase 75 door up until the window line just there because the roof in these is about two and a quarter inches taller glass wise obviously then you have the elongated roof the middle door is completely custom um, which is terrifying should anything ever happen to it but we'll not think about that. Um, this being the former mayor of Exeter's car, there was a lovely little um, crest there that belonged to the mayor of Exeter. We'll open this one up. Now, a lot of people have asked me, do these windows open? On my car, they do. Um, however, I can't control them as I still only have the four switches and the switch pack at the front. Um, this seat is completely custom compared to the other 75 seats the rear bench the bottom part of the bench is custom but the top part is also custom as well it folds down headrests are the same but yes it does fold down so we'll pop in here again now that we look at the sandstone beige biscuit interior um, one thing that is particularly interesting that I've noticed, um, this car was supposed to have the divider as a lot of the McNeils would have had. Hold on, I'll zoom that back out. A lot of the McNeils would have had in this area. And this is why these seats are so much more flatter compared to 75 seats regularly. Um, unfortunately, that was thrown out by the previous owner. We can't do anything about that now. But alas, it is what it is. 
Um, hold on, just go back to the right zoom for you saw here. The car itself is reasonably, you know, entry level. It would certainly be club equivalent. Um, has no project drive stuff left over, being a 2003. Does have some interesting switches at the front. We'll get to them in a minute. These middle door cards um, are completely fiberglass, which is particularly interesting uh, compared to the plastic ones used in normal 75s. So again, another interesting and concerning little piece. You can actually see down at the speaker, they have begun to split on this door. Um, this door is actually jammed. This door, unfortunately, was part of the reason this car just failed its uh, MOT. That's where I'm coming back from now as we record this. Um, this door's jammed. The horn is failing to work and it needs some sill work. But, you know, hey, that's not the end of the world. I expected sill work and I knew this door wasn't working and I knew the horn wasn't working. So for everything else to pass, I'm reasonably content. And I'll try and get it done within the 60 days. Uh, a few more features that are unusual. Um, is this blanking section here. Uh, obviously with the blanking panel that would come here that the window would roll up and down and isolate. They have a shorter section for the rear um, armrest. Um, previous owner has screwed in a few of these wee cup holder things. They had uh, branded tissues. There appears to be some shite in there. Um, again, door cards, as you can see, cloth's a little bit loose, but, you know, it, the, the, this is all stuff that can be dealt with, you know, like, the, these being badly trimmed. Um, I'm very surprised these are standard Rover 75 ones coming to that height rather than going to the roof. Um, we, again, I'll deal with that in the future. I'm not overly stressed about that at the moment. We'll pop into the front. Again, um, door's standard 75, but has the extra height. Well, the interesting thing is, whenever you put the window down, it only goes down to about there. Hold on, I'll show you that now. So no cruising with your window out, with your uh, arm out the window. There is an isolator switch for all the windows. I've never even tried this back window. It's supposed to go down. Have I got the isolator switch on still? Yes, here we go. Let's see if that makes any difference. Probably won't. I really haven't checked this car over at all. No. Have to have a wee look at that. Something else to fix. See if the back ones work. Nah, uh, well, yeah, at least you're getting to see the real raw footage and not some tarted up YouTube princess. I'm getting the car again. It is unfortunately starting to rain. One nice little addition I noticed, it does have the uh, rain sensing wipers. But as I was saying, it has a few extra switches. Um, heated seats, obviously. Actually at windows, I think I might have Put them on and off, but I hear no relay clicking when that activates. And this would have been the division behind the driver's and driver passenger seat. It's a rocker switch, as you can see. And that would have lowered and raised it up and down. And the switch in the back row actually blocked it. It wouldn't allow the driver to override it. So, very interesting. Um, what else? Standard interior-wise, really. This cup holder is a bit ghetto, but truth be told, I mean, it's not something we're too worried about. Um, no wood dash. There you are, 82,000 miles on the clock. As some of you guys know, I do have some history with this car. One I chased down. And it also has included the McNeil Vehicle Handbook. Now, this is something that, um, hold on, I'm not going to show you that for data protection reasons, so forgive me for hiding that, because that's actually part of the way I was able to find out the vehicle's origins. Um, I'll maybe do some scans of these if anyone's interested. So what have we got here? Supplement to the Rover 75 limousine. 
Uh, right. I'll just let this sit here for a few seconds. So you guys can choose to pause in between. The pages are printed on pretty thick card. All right. And uh, I, I, I was really hoping that this would be in the car. Uh, quite fortunate to find that it was. And there was a few things in the car that I wasn't expecting to find. <laughs> Snow mode for the chauffeur. Ow. Um, interesting that it states about the larger size tires due to the weight capacity. That's an interesting little fact. 215-60-16. Uh, tire pressure is 38 PSI. It does have a full size spare. And some additional dimensions. People have asked me how long it is, etc. So that will obviously answer all those sorts of questions. And a warranty. Six year anti-corrosion warranty. Well, I can tell you now from having been underneath this car, um, six years was uh, a, a, a strong estimate of how long the bodywork is. Uh, unfortunately, it would seem that the vehicles were not uh, undercoated in any way, shape or form. Nothing on the back. No, that's, that's the wee owner's book from McNeil. Nice wee thing to have. Uh, I thought, obviously, as Rover 75 enthusiasts, you'd all want to see that wee part. And um, put that away into the glove box. Um, under the bonnet, it's nothing radical, nothing different. It is just still Rover 75 V6. I'm sure you guys want to see it anyway. But there is something you guys might like, which is a bit unusual. Nope. Sorry. There we go. It does have the little flag mount in the bonnet from when it was the mayor of Exeter's car. Um, and it does. Some people have questioned was it laggard under the bonnet? No. Standard flat raven black underneath. Uh, nothing too strange or startling. I will get round to tidying this guy up eventually, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, car seems okay. Few wee tweaks mechanically. I do want to get the uh, automation, tra oh, sorry, automatic transmission fluid changed at some stage. It's definitely on the to-do list. But overall, yeah, not too bad. Um, but I was questioned: was there any changes in the boot? I've only actually been in the boot once, was the day I collected the car. A bit of mould, a few leaves. Nothing unusual. A couple of extra bulbs. And there's that full-size spare Pirelli 215-6016. A little bit of free damp, happy days. But yes, um, That is it. She does have parking sensors. And that's her. Now, there is one funny feature that the car has that I've since confirmed with uh, the Exeter team that it doesn't, that it has now that it didn't used to have. Strobes. That's right, gang. This Rover 75 has strobes. It's um, not to do with VIP status or anything like that. Uh, I've never checked if it's got any strobes at the rear. I don't think so. No, I'll switch them off for the tracks on tension. Um, apparently it's some sort of legislation in the Republic of Ireland where this car had lived for the last few years. Uh, it does have Mark II 16s, um, quite recently refurbished as well. And you know, credit where credit's due, the car is not bad, okay? 
It's wee silly things like the chrome on the front bumper has a crack in it. <sighs> Minor stuff. The outside of the car is very, very presentable. There is one issue that um, when they took the headlining out, they took the rear window out. And you can just see here a little bit of bubbling starting to begin there. That is on my to-do list, although that is on the last of the to-do list jobs. And as you can see, the rear window, McNeil, the, uh, the rear door, McNeil, the middle door, McNeil. Hold on. The front door does have McNeil on it, but it only goes so low. Uh, I'm not sure if that's to do with the bend here at all. And then obviously we go round to the front window. McNeil. So, yeah guys, um, that's her so far. I know this isn't an overly detailed video. It is going to be a project. Um, this wasn't meant to happen. And it is kind of a funny story about how it did happen. Um, I happen to be selling several of my cars, um, personal reasons and health reasons. I'll go into that later on in another video. Um, this came along, the circumstances were ideal. I said I always wanted one. Um, my own personal history with the car is particularly interesting. Um, but what it actually needs is, obviously it's gonna need sills the full length of the car. The outside of these is something that I didn't know. You can see from the wing here, there's quite a shelf. And that goes the whole length of the car. There's actually a fiberglass skirt. Runs the entire length of the outer side of the car. And it's molded to be almost identical to 75s as they are. Um, fascinating, it's something I never knew. And it's a great shame that somebody didn't make more of them because with some of the sill repairs and bad jobs, it would be nice to have a fiberglass skirt you could put on your standard 75s. So at a glance, the car would be a lot more presentable. Um, so yes, the fiberglass skirt is bonded on as well as screwed on. So I'm gonna have to have that removed uh, to get the work done. Thankfully, um, when the MOT man had it on the ramp there, he. I, couldn't go into the MOT center for Northern Ireland COVID restrictions, but he did take a couple of pictures for me on his phone and he showed me. The inner sill that is protected by the skirt is reasonably undamaged, which is brilliant. So it is mostly the L-shaped aspect of the sill that goes into the body is the issue. Um, it looks like someone has done the major repairs in the main two areas across the body uh, diagonally at some stage. That all seems to have been repaired up pretty good. So, fingers crossed, it's just the two cells, the length of the car. I have found a gentleman who specializes in cars, uh, classic American muscle cars, um, quite local to me. He's gonna be getting the job. But other than that, that is the actual car itself. I'll bounce into it and tell you a wee bit more. These mats are absolutely pimping. I love these mats. Um, it's like an old school shag carpet pimp bus. So hold on here while I change the camera around to me. Um, hold on. So yes, this car is a bit of a strange one for me. The short version was, was um, I managed to find this car entering Northern Ireland back circa, oh, I think it was late to mid August, mid to late August 2017. And I saw this car and it was in a real bad state. It had came through the auction in England. Um, I'm going to put up a couple of pictures of what it was like during the auction in England. And the pictures do the car a lot of favours. Um, the car did not look anything like the pictures. And it was parked up in Molusk. And it was funny because I was out with myself, mother, and my father. My father was going to buy a, a second-hand car. Um, and I was mollusk, by the way, for people not from Northern Ireland. Very sorry. 
is a uh, commercial business area just outside of Belfast, about five, six miles outside of Belfast. It does have housing on it. Um, some upper market housing has been developed on it in recent years, but it primarily used to be uh, business focused. It was a Michelin plant for a long time and then an industrial estate. And it has a mixture of that and housing on it now. Um, a lot of car dealerships, etc., are there. But anyway, myself, mother, and my father saw it. Um, I went over and spoke to the owner of the garage who told me who basically he was servicing it for another individual. I gave him my number. I asked him to pass it on to that other individual. That other individual was importing limousines into Northern Ireland to sell to Northern Ireland and individuals in the Republic of Ireland. He had bought this um, for, I can't remember if it was 2,200 or 2,400 pounds sterling plus shipping. The shipping he did tell me at the time was 350 pounds because of the size of it. And when the car got here, he was very, very disappointed in it. Um, understandable having seen it. Um, every panel had damage. Um, there was, you know, problems across the length of the car. And at that time, the car had not ran out of MOT, but it didn't have much MOT left. So I went and spoke to him, talked to him, made him an offer. Um, he told me he had sold the car that day. Truthfully, I offered him about 350, 400 pounds for the car because it was not worth it. It was really, really rough. Um, at the time, I would sit comfortably say you need to put about 3,000, maybe 3,500 pounds in panels and paint and bodywork into the car alone. So he then informed me the car was going to the Republic of Ireland to be sold um, to a chauffeur company who planned to paint it bottom half black and the top half silver, um, or bottom half silver, top half black, one or the other, um, as part of their wedding hire. And I was like, okay, I asked, could you pass me all my information? I'd be keen to buy the car. And he, and he just laughed and he says, nah, I'm not, I'm, and he, he wasn't willing to help. Okay, fair enough. Um, fast forward about six, seven months and I was on, I just started using Instagram and I found a picture of the car in uh, attending a funeral in the Republic of Ireland and it still had its UK number plate on it. And I was like, right, okay, that's, that's strange. It there was whatever has happened um it wasn't being used as a uh, it hadn't gone through the importation process i says right okay interesting um managed to find through the girl who had had taken the picture it was one of her family members funerals contacted her asked who'd carried out the funeral she was able to tell me and i made inquiries with the uh, owners of the funeral business and they were able to say to me yes we have the car we have the car etc etc and i said to them i says look guys um i was up looking at the car it needs a few things it's not really running suitable and they said to me yes there's problems with it and i says look guys i have left you a list in the glove box of what the car needed um and they said no it, we didn't get that and i'm not surprised whoever would have read that list would have probably cried so i dare say it was the person who was selling the car um, so then at this stage, we turned around and went, look, I'll help you get some parts. So I advised them anything they needed, et cetera, et cetera. And off they went happy enough. And I remained in contact with the owner. And I says, look, if you ever get to the stage, you're going to sell the car. Give me a shout. I would love to take ownership of the car. Um, two, three weeks ago, I personal health has got into a bad situation here. I'm suffering from a condition called costochondriitis. Basically, it means that my chest uh, suffers from various levels of continuous infection. Pretty serious. Um, what happens is you would take like chest spasms and chest pains, and some of these spasms and pains will last for hours. And the doctors inform me that the pain level is the equivalent of having uh, a stroke or a heart attack for several long long periods of time the problem with it is, is it'll start and stop start and stop and it mostly comes through exertion or exercise etc so i had to say to myself i'm getting rid of some cars i need to prioritize on projects and 
on top of that as well, I said to myself, if I have to pay someone to finish off my ZTT, getting it back on the road, I need to gather up some money. So I had three of the four cars sold. Um, I sold, and people are not going to believe this, um, my recently imported ZT190. That has been sold with just under a year's MOT on it. There was a video about that coming. It has been delayed. Um, I'm just going to wait until it leaves my driveway before I publish that. There's nothing dodgy about that in the slightest, but um, I'm putting a new windscreen in it for the owner and a few other bits and pieces just to make sure it's right. It's it's one of those things, you know, it's going to be his car or his son's car or whatever. And I think they're, two of them's going to have a really nice car there. Goes like a clappers. It's one of the best 190s I've ever driven in my life. And it was Raven Black as well. So I've sold it. I sold my old English white um, diesel tour. It was going to be a pretty big project. I just knew that it was just too much. It was too involved. Um, it was going to be a waste of time for me physically and emotionally at this moment in time. Um, I'm looking at anywhere up to a two year recovery. Um, I might get lucky and I might be back to normal in six months, but the doctors have told me to expect quite a bit of uh quite a few problems over the next six months 10 months 12 months 15 18 months etc um so that car was just too much so it went quite sad about that because i really wanted to turn that into a family car um but wasn't to be i then sold my green two liter v6 um that was one that i'd started about uh, about a profits part job um that actually is, it's a strange old story, that car. That car is now going off to become quite a major parts car for a lot of people. Um, I, I do believe that it's actually going to help resurrect a few cars. And I know there's panels off it are going on to a former uh, Green Tour press car, which um, I really, really think it'll be a, a nice thing to have saved and knowing that that car's went off to be part of that. And then, and the one that hurt me most of all, I sold my low mileage 1.875. That was the one you guys saw me, you know, put the new fuel tank in, you know, bring back from the dead um, when it was considered to be good for scrap. Um, I put a year's MOT on it. I did some basic servicing after I got it running right. And do you know what? I sold it and I know I shouldn't have sold it and I regret it and I do mean I regret selling that. Um, but it was the final one that needed to go. And when I put that up for sale was when I was contacted about this car and I felt that I had made the right decision. Even though I know this car is going to cost me a lot of time, a lot of hassle and a lot of problems. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, there was only 13 long wheel bases made in six door form. Now, some people have said 15. The people that I consider the knowledgeable experts have told me 13. So we'll get that confirmed for a later video, just to be sure. But yeah, um, the cars came to me. Um, I'm not going to say to people how much I paid for the car. Some of my close friends know how much I paid for the car um, because a combination of I don't think people would believe me. Um, on top of that as well, I wouldn't want people to sort of be a bit green-eyed monster about it. Um, happened to me before and I wouldn't, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to brag about it, but I feel that I've got the car and circumstances that I'm very happy with to become not owner of the car but steward of the car because of the car's history and the car's history is where it gets really really interesting and um, with it being the former mayor of Exeter's car um i contacted their team i was like look i have purchased this car i'm going to be restoring it over the next few years etc and i would you know just curious do you have any photos and history of the car and wow wow the the, the the Exeter mayoral team have gotten contact. They have been 
fantastic and i mean guys if any of you do end up watching this video thank you very much i know i'm right at the start of this but the positivity and the the happiness that i experienced from just talking to those guys as part of the mayoral team now even though the the mayors have changed a few times um you know the, there's so many fond memories i mean one of the things was they were telling me that they replaced the um the the six door with a bmw seven series um hybrid car you know and they were saying you know one of their press releases was the hybrid car was getting about 40 miles to the gallon and they were struggling to get you know low mid 20s out of this car um which to be honest is about right um now as i and brought the car back when I the day I booked the MOT for it and I collected it, I just collected it and drove it straight to the MOT center from its port of origin and I've got the fail sheet in my hand. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um I'll show you this part. This is how we get them in Northern Ireland. Uh notification of refusal and that's that's all you are getting to see. <laughs> I'll go into the details, but like I say it was only the sills, the horn and the door it failed on. So and they got a hold of me and they phoned me back and we had a great chat. And they said to me, they said they had the car for well, 14 or 14 years. And in 14 years, the six door limo never got one parking ticket, despite anywhere that it was parked in the extra in the greater extra region, because everyone knew it was the mayor's car. And even though it had the mayor's number plate, and I'll put a picture of the car up here as we're going along, the mayor's number plate on it and the mayoral crest and the crest of exeter etc including the wee flag in the bottom nothing as soon as they got the bmw they <laughs> they put the mayor's number plate on it apparently the car's getting parking ticketed all the time no one recognizes it as the mayor's car and it just it was it was they were talking to me about wee funny stories and things and before i realized i'd the email had actually after after it sent the emails with oh, and we were chatting on the phone they've got back to me again and they've managed to find the spare key for the car like this is just fantastic anyone who owns a 75 or zt knows the costs involved and the problems involved like if you go to buy a key from bmw for one of these you're lucky to get change at a 250 pound and even if you get one coated you still got to get it cut etc etc i mean I, I personally don't know of a way of getting one for under 100 pound so the fact that they find this key for me is just incredible and it's going to be making its way to me very shortly so i gotta give a massive shout out to the exeter team for and all the ones that involved in the vehicle department or anyone who's read the email that helped find that key and i don't know how the topic of conversation came up or if somebody just remembered it as the spare but thank you guys thank you very much um stuff like that the the weird things that have been happening about this car already it's like it's just like a dream that was meant to happen and I'm so enthusiastic about this project going forward. I also can't wait to get it completely sorted. I do have a few things I want to do with the car. Um, I will be bringing it to Pride of Longbridge in 2022, uh, providing we have Pride of Longbridge in 2022. Uh, I'm sure Gemma and her team will make it happen. Um, hopefully we're starting to come out of lockdown more and more gradually um, i know today here in northern ireland we have started coming out of um like restrictions from the common travel area which is brilliant you know get down to the republic of ireland now over to the isle of man without 10 days of isolation so that's great hopefully that remains and we can travel around the uk and you know everyone's got their you know getting their uh, injection and keeping themselves careful and safe the big thing for me i really want to do with this car is this year get as i say get the sills all sorted out it's going to be maybe two months before the sills are getting done the particular individual he's an absolute metalwork craftsman he took me around some of his work and he blew me away um hopefully he'll let me come up and film him and we can talk to him about stuff um we we bonded over our love of fox body mustangs and then he then went and showed me that he had one so that was for me like 
brilliant you know fox body mustangs are my favorite mustangs i know everyone loves to go on about the you know the 67s and like the uh, 71s and all that sort of stuff and the coupes and all the no, 67s uh fox bodies for me are just the coolest and i i you know my my youtube feed is mostly about mustang fox body stuff never mind rover stuff and i know that might surprise a few people but you know hey there's not that many channels out there about rovers so yeah um as, as soon as uh he's got that sorted out um i'm hoping to get the horn sorted out here over the weekend um i'm hoping to get that middle door opened over the weekend because that's obviously oh there's the interior lights have switched off they seem to be on a timer of 15 minutes i don't know why um so get the the middle door sorted out get the horn sorted out over the weekend and then it's just a waiting game to get the cells done so guys look I know this is a one shot long video. I wanted to tell you all about it. Like, I mean, I know there's a lot of people on my Instagram and other social media have went, Colin, you've got to do a video about the car. Um, I literally put up a video of the car the, the, the day I got it. Um, it was, and that was it. So here we go. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you are going to help me take part in it. Um, I would love to hear from anyone who might have been like a former driver of the car and um, any of the former mayors that were in the car um i know there's been certain celebrities have been in the car like the queen of jordan was in the car at one stage um there was a group of holocaust survivors that were in the car and multiple other um military individuals that were hosted by accident over the years so if you have a history of the car if you have a photograph of the car please use the links below, email me, message me on social media or whatever, please, because I would love to hear anyone's links or memories of the car. Um, I am planning to bring the car for a grand return tour to Exeter after Pride of Longbridge. So with Pride of Longbridge being in April 2022, um, on the Monday, I plan to bring the car back to Exeter back to its home and get a few photos around the town a few of the famous sites etc so guys thank you very much a uh, hell of a long video i know hell of a long car <laughs> you know six meters long she's a big girl um but as you can see i am buzzing about this this is something that i just i dreamed about i almost had and now I've got it, and I'm just so chuffed about it. Yes, I've had to make a big sacrifice with several of my cars, um, but this one is just such a keeper. It's unbelievable. Um, I have been asked, will I be doing funerals or weddings or anything like that with the car? At this minute in time, until the car is sorted, no. I have had a discussion with myself and my father about the subject we may do it in the future um but at this moment in time no um I, I need to get the restoration to where i'm happy with i have to get the car functional to where i'm happy with and i have to get make sure the car is mechanically dependable enough to where i'm happy with um if we do do it it would be myself and my father um nice thing that me and my father can do um i'd be more keen to do funerals um my own family has a lot to do with uh, military and cancer and chest heart and stroke and things like that so i would be very keen to do um especially you know elderly individuals that might struggle to get out for funerals and especially with covid this year the way it's it's locked a lot of people in care homes etc um so that that's something that's on my mind but i will not be offering the car out for free hire as such like a taxi or anything like that but it will be brought to every show that i can possibly attend in northern ireland and the republic of ireland and depending on what changes over the next 12 months maybe the all rover day in scotland um maybe mg live in england who knows but look guys thank you very much Thanks for watching. I really hope you see the passion I have for this project coming out of me already. Um, I'd love for you to like and subscribe. 
the more you guys like this video, the more you guys subscribe to this video, the more the video gets out there. Okay. Um, if you just want to share it with your mates, share it with your mates. If you want to send me a message, please do. I always have time to reply to a message. I'm not usually that busy unless I'm doing a bit of studying for my degree. So, gang, look, get out there, get your spanners out, enjoy your cars. And as the motto for the, the uh, Robson Rover repair now is, buy it, build it, break it, blog it. So get off your backside, buy yourself a project, build your project, break your project, and blog all about how you just screwed it all up. Because believe me, it's the only way you learn. So gang, look after yourself, take it easy, and I'll hopefully see you on the road.